All right, so I got a letter from a viewer. Treasure, Treasure Forever. Nice name. And she asked, what's basically the right way to quit your job? What do you say? I wanted to give you two quick tips before you go into the resignation meeting. Tip number one. Don't tell anybody before you do it. The person to whom you report should be the first person that you tell you're leaving. That's just etiquette and protocol. So do them that favor and do yourself that favor because you want to do everything perfect so that you can always walk out and say, I did it like a pro. So don't tell anybody. Tip number two. If you have been there for a while and you have collected things, you know, if you have a workspace and you have personal effects, make sure that you have in a moment of clarity where you're not upset, gathered every single thing that you want to bring with you when you quit and make sure that that is waiting in the car by the time you go into this meeting. I mean, you don't want to leave anything that you may need in your workspace or anywhere when you go into that meeting, just in case, you know, in case you might be escorted out of the meeting. Now, this is not going to be confrontational, but you know, many companies, when you give them your two weeks notice, they just figure, mm, it's best now that you've given me your two weeks notice. I'll pay you for the two weeks, but John here will see you to the door. And if that happens to you, do not take it personally. It happens all the time. So get all of that housekeeping stuff done before the meeting. And now you're ready for your resignation meeting. Okay, here are the tools you will need. Number one, you need a leather portfolio. Number two, you need your resignation letter, link below. Number three, you need your personal survey, link below. You need a yellow legal pad and you need a pen. Okay, once you've got your tools, schedule a meeting as you normally would. You know, hey Bob, can I have a few minutes before we break today at five? Okay, so when you go into your meeting, remember to bring with you your leather portfolio in which you will find your resignation letter, your personal survey, your yellow legal pad, and a pen. You don't really need anything else when you walk into this meeting under normal circumstances. So you go in and when you sit down, the reason I recommend having a leather portfolio, you know, a big sturdy one, is because many times during this meeting, you won't have anything really to plant yourself on. You know, if you're in an office that has a table where you can scoot up to it and plant yourself on it like this, absolutely do that. I recommend sitting like this with your fingers laced so that as you want to punctuate things that you say, you can do that using the steeple. You may have seen that in a previous video. But if you can't do that and you find yourself sitting in a chair kind of all by yourself, you know, an island, and you're already a little bit nervous going into this meeting, it's going to make it even worse, especially if you don't have anything to do with your hands. So if you bring in this portfolio, you can plant that on your lap. And if you're nervous, just remember, keep it planted there. It'll help you with your posture as well. It'll stop you from fidgeting and you are body language wise ready to go. So here's what you're going to do. There is a seven step process. Are you ready? You're going to open up your portfolio and on your yellow legal pad, you should have written a quick guide, you know, like a quick script and do not be afraid to look down at your notes and talk to the person and do not be afraid if you need to say at the beginning of the meeting, something like, or throughout the meeting, Ooh, this is difficult for me or, Oh, you know, this is hard for me. If you need to say that and get some of that energy out, great. Or if you need to say at the beginning, this is kind of difficult for me. So I wrote some notes that I'm going to be referring to. Don't ask for permission. You know, now's not the time to do that. Just let them know. And on that yellow legal pad, there will be seven key points that you will have written down. And you want to make sure you hit each and every one of these in order. Are you ready? Number one, you first. Number two, I quit. Number three, final days. Number four, needs questions and how can I help? Number five, nothing but good things. Number six, please fill this out. Number seven, valuable contribution. Let me go through each one of the seven steps and tell you what they are. And then I'll tell you how they kind of sound and what might happen as you deliver them. Number one, you first. I want to make sure that my boss knows at the beginning of this meeting that I'm choosing to deliver this information to them and share this information with them first before anybody else, because I want to honor them and I want to respect the relationship and protocol. If I do that at the beginning of the meeting, it sets up the meeting as a respectful one. And it sets up the relationship that, because remember, all relationships are forever, all of them, unfortunately for some, but 
it sets the tone for this relationship going forward as a respectful one. Number two, I quit. Of course, you have to actually say the words, I'm giving you my two weeks notice, or I am officially resigning, or I'm tendering my resignation, however you say that. Number three, you want to make sure to ask what to do during your final days so that you can make the biggest contribution you can, so that you can be helpful, so that you can maybe usher in the person who's taking your place. Number four, needs questions and how can I help? You want to ask your supervisor or manager, whomever it may be, what do you need from me during this resignation process or what questions may you have or how can I help right now? Is there something that I should be doing? Number five, nothing but good things. You're going to articulate. I have nothing but good things to say about this organization. Number six, please fill this out. You're going to ask them to fill out a personal review for you. And number seven, valuable contribution. You're going to plant a label on your way out the door that you want to stick with you. If you want to be thought of as someone who made a valuable contribution. And now, by the way, whether or not you care about what your supervisor or manager thinks, think about the next job that you're going to. What do you want them to hear about you when they make that reference call to that person? Do you want them to hear that you made a valuable contribution? Do you want them to hear that you know, you're a team player? Whatever it is, figure out what that label is, and that's gonna be step number seven. And here's how you put it all together. So I'd sit down and I'd look at my notes, and again, if you need to say something like, ooh, this is difficult for me, so please bear with me. You know, I'd look down at my notes if, I needed, if you need to. Mark, I have some big news that I wanted to share with you, and I wanted to share it with you first before anybody else found out. I am going to be leaving XYZ Company and today is going to serve as my official two weeks notice. So I wanted to call this meeting with you to see how I can make the most out of these last couple of weeks and what I should be doing to help the person who may be replacing me. And uh, I wanted to ask you if there's anything that you might need from me or any questions you might have or what I should be doing, not just in the next couple of weeks, but right now for the resignation process. At this point, they'll probably ask you something like, Oh, why? You know, or what, what gives? Where are you going? What are you doing? If you say anything negative, you're doomed. Because remember, if you quit this way, I can't tell you how many organizations have called people back and said, could you come in and talk? And they've offered them new things because this is how they went out. So remember, don't skip this step when they ask you, why are you leaving or something like that? You never want to say anything negative about the company, especially at this point, because if you're quitting because you had a bad boss or you had, you know, gossipy coworkers or the place is disorganized, you should have brought that up earlier. You know, this is, that's not something that you state on your way out the door. That's something that if you were, a, you know, a, if you were committed to your job and your profession and your company, you would let them know while you're there what you're observing and suggest ways to fix it or, you know, find ways to work through it or help improve. So once you're quitting, all of that's over. So it's really not appropriate to talk about anything like that anyway. You know what I mean? Because especially you're not there to try to get them to, you know, beg you to stay. You can only do this once you have totally committed, I'm leaving, period. I'm just letting you know. All right. If, however, they say, you know, why or what, what, what do you think was the final straw? Let's say that it was your boss, for example. I always make it about you, what you've got, and how you really can't get that anymore. You know, so if, if you have a horrible boss, it could be something like, well, in my time here, I've really learned a lot of lessons about how to deal with different personality types. And I've worked through a lot of issues that I had to work through in myself. And I think that I've really worked through as many as I possibly can. And I'd like to give somebody else the chance to learn the lessons that I've learned and I'm off to greener pastures where I can learn some new, fresh lessons. That's all. Or if you have, you know, gossipy coworkers that you just can't stand anymore. Well, I think in my time here, I have learned a lot about dealing with different personality types. And I think that I've worked through a lot of issues in myself that I had to work through and I've resolved them. So now I think it's time to go find some new issues and resolve those someplace else. Or, you know, let's say that it was, it's a disorganized mess. Well, I think that I've learned a lot about how this organization works and how an organization like this works. And I've grown a lot 
and appreciate the opportunity to have learned all that I have, I think that it's now time for me to go on and learn some new things someplace else. You don't need to justify why you're leaving. You know, saying something like, I've learned lessons here. I'm now going to learn them someplace else. That's perfect. I've enjoyed the relationships I've had here. I've decided to go enjoy some new relationships someplace else. It's all you need to say. And then when they say, okay, well, that sounds great. The last three things you're going to say are, John or Mary, I just want you to know, I only have positive things to say about this organization. And I will only say positive things about you, my teammates, and this organization from this day forward. Now, by the way, even if they know that you have been, you know, unhappy in your position or that, you know, who could possibly say only positive things about this organization, you're letting them know from this day forward, you know, I'm going to bury the hatchet if there is one. And not that you're asking for forgiveness, but if they had a, an image of you as a negative employee or a troublemaker or whatever, when you say things like that on the way out, you know, I just want you to know. I only will have positive things to say about you and my teammates in this organization. They, most people, most reasonable people tend to think, wow, you really did learn something here. Good for you. And they kind of think back and think, you know, I've been in that situation, but I didn't handle it that well. So, wow, what a class act. You know, even though they had difficult times here, they decided to leave that way. Positive. And now here's the... This is the icing on the cake. This is what will get you the call back and ask to come back to a better position. Maybe the managers to whom you're quitting right now. You say, you know, after you say, I have nothing but good things to say about this company. And if you would do me a favor, please, here's a copy of my resignation for your files. And if you could take a few moments to fill out this personal survey, this is just for me. I won't be sharing it with anyone. It's not an official document. It's just to help me grow personally and professionally. There are some questions on there about, what you did and didn't like about working with me, what maybe I could improve on. You don't need to put your name on it. I'm just looking for some feedback. It is not official. If I could come back in like 15 minutes and grab that, I would really appreciate it. Now, you want now I, I, on this document, it's going to have printed. This is not official. You don't need to put your name. This is only for personal growth. If they have a good HR department, they won't fill that out anyway. But most people will fill it out and give it back to you. Regardless of whether they fill it out or not, they will be blown away that you on your way out the door said, would you please evaluate me? Could you help me learn and grow? Could you take a moment to fill out this quick survey? You know what I mean? Nobody does that. They will be blown away. Then, after they say yes, uh, uh, and they're left speechless, you're going to use as your exit line whatever label you want to stick with you. Whatever label you want used when your prospective employer, when your new boss, when your you know, new client calls them for a reference. What do you want them to say about you? For example, if you'd like them to say, that you added value to the organization. As you close, you say, well, thanks, John. And I hope that during my time here, I added value to this organization. Or if you made a contribution, you know, made a valuable contribution. Well, thank you, John. And as a final note, I just hope that during my time here, I made a valuable contribution to this organization because I tried to do that. Then you leave. You want to plant that label because you're already leaving them speechless with the professional way you handled it, your survey, your resignation letter, your poise, your clarity. Then when you say that on the way out the door, that will stick. And they will probably use that to describe you, especially when they go tell their boss, you will never believe how this person just quit. And again, don't be surprised if they call and ask you back. It's up to you whether or not you take you know, the offer that they're making you, but then you will be in a totally different position by the way, if you would ever consider going back. But if you follow those seven steps, when the person, when, you're, when, when your next employer or client or whomever it may be, may call them or talk to them and ask about you and ask for a reference, they will, if they remember nothing else about you, they will say, oh yeah, I remember them, class act. You know, they really made a contribution. They taught me a thing or two. Even if they just say how you quit. Oh, you never believe how he quit. He came in here, he said wonderful things, gave me an evaluation to fill out for him, and left like a pro. I couldn't believe it. You will leave a lasting impression. And if they have negative things to say about you, probably they will change their tune, know that they're dealing with a real professional, by the way. And we're not supposed to, you know, say a whole lot during these reference calls. And you will teach them how it's done. So I hope that that answers your question, Treasure. And for everybody who you know may be dealing with 
what it sounds like Treasure might be dealing with, you know, a, a disorganized workplace or people who don't appreciate you. Remember, every job that you have is not about an organization or your coworkers or your boss. It's not about that. When you're in a job and you have difficult moments in it, it's bringing things up that it should have brought up that you need to work through. And if you just quit your job before you work through them, you're going to be doomed to repeat them in the next job. And it'll keep coming up again and again and again and again until you work through it in you. And that's really what it's all about. So keep that in mind when you're quitting. And even when you're quitting, how you do that is a reflection of who you are. Because really in the end, every word we say is nothing more than a testament to the professional and the person that we believe we are. And to keep elevating the global dialogue, which I hope all of our mindful communicators at danoconnertraining.com are trying to do because the global conversation needs a lot of help. Remember to follow these three steps. First, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. Next, download your communication starter kit. You'll find the link below. Before you, number three, watch some more of our great videos. If you have a question, go to my website, danarconnertraining.com, and submit your video question there. It'll go straight to the top. So for everybody here at Dan O'Connor Training, this is Dan O'Connor, wishing you a happy resignation and signing off.